Hello, I'm Rachel Carroll. I'm President and Managing Partner at Edison. Today we're going to be talking about space technology. The small satellite market is expected to increase by nearly fourfold in just eight years to become a $42 billion industry. I'm delighted to be joined today by three of the leading players in the field, Saab, Orbcom and AAC Clyde, who today announced an exciting new collaboration that heralds the next generation in maritime communications. I'd first like to address my questions to Luis Gomez, who's the CEO of AAC Clyde Space. Luis, welcome. Thank you, Rachel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So the new satellite to be launched in 2022 will carry a VHF data exchange system with a payload from Saab and Orbcom will integrate the data. Could you first explain to what a VHF data exchange system actually is and how this will impact maritime communications? And then more on what AAC Clyde's role will be within the collaboration. So VDS, uh is a technology that extends the current existing technology, AIS technology that is used in ships and uh, in vessels uh, all around the world to, uh, so that they can actually broadcast their position, they, they can tell where they are, uh, who they are. Uh, and this is uh, a very important part of uh, navigation right now uh, because it allows higher level of uh, safety and, uh, in shipping. And, uh, and it has been a very successful uh, system that is now used not only between ships and shore, between ships among themselves, but also via satellite. So, so these signals are picked up by, by a satellite and are then actually collected and then sent down uh, to ground stations where they can be analyzed and uh, companies like Orcom um, will then use that in analytics products that are, uh, that are used by law enforcement, by Ship owners by by all sorts of uh, all sorts of uh, users. What VDS is going to do is to extend that. Uh, so it's effectively the next generation um, of uh, of that system, and it will not only collect the same kind of data, but will extend the amount of data that can be collected. Um, it has a, a, a larger bandwidth, uh, allowing for more information to be transmitted. So we will now be able to actually transmit other information like uh, the, how the engines are running, the conditions of the vessel, um, and at the same time we will allow the data to be provided, transferred to the vessels, to the ships. So you can actually broadcast to the ships, you can, you can actually send data uh, on weather forecasting, uh, you, can, you can actually send commands to uh, things like, uh, like the engines or to the, to the ship to, to actually Make sure that they are doing the that they are doing the right things, and this opens a whole new a whole new set of applications um, for from not only on the existing vessels, but when you are looking at things like uh, aut autonomous uh, shipping, that is something that is now becoming quite uh, quite a big quite a big thing for the future. That is uh, ships with very reduced crews or or no no crews at all. Uh, this, kind of, this ability to actually not only receive data, but also issue, send information to the ships and instructions and, uh, and commands becomes a very important part of the of safety at sea. Now doing this from satellite, uh, extends this from coast, from the coastal regions to the entire uh, oceans. Um, and this is something that uh, we have over the, the years, we have learned from using AIS it is actually quite a, a critical application. So when, when those systems were originally designed, they were very much coastal in nature, uh, but the ability to use them all over the world uh, continuously uh, is, is a very important part of, uh, of uh, using, of safety at sea, of ensuring that our oceans are safe. In terms of our role in, in this, uh, what we are delivering uh, is what we are experts in, that is space segment. So we are delivering the satellites, the platforms, we are delivering uh, the, the, the design of that, that part of the system. That's the area that we are uh, specialists. We are working with our partners at Saab, and Saab is leading that, this, this activity uh, using their experience on the, on the AIS and VDES. So that's an area that they, 
they have been uh, they have been uh, big big innovators over the years. So they, they are using that. And then with Orcom, that are that are great that are a great partner in terms of uh, the uses of this data. Thank you very much. And you know, it's great to be also have the opportunity to speak to both Saab and Orcom today. So moving to Krista Fugelsong, who's a space consultant for Saab and also happens to be a CERN physicist and former astronaut. I'm delighted to have you with us today, Krista. So Saab's obviously a, a very well-known leading aerospace and defense business with a global presence. What attracted Saab to this collaboration and what role do you play? Yeah, we are very happy about this collaboration in OASA Clyde and Orcom. Uh, and we're looking forward to start to get to work in space. Uh, a couple of years ago, Saab decided we need to see what can we do in space and what's happening in space. And that's how I came in uh, as a space consultant here. And um, this gives a, a road to really now build something for space. And our role is that uh, Saab has been a pioneer and is a world leading uh, provider of the existing AIS products. But we realize now that we, this will be more and more also going into space. So we want to develop and improve our technology for the VDES, uh, the boxes, so to say, uh, that they also work in space to kind of keep our edge in this area, to kind of you know, make sure we you know, keep our market also for the ships and the ground the segment and now the space right now. Uh, today we have about 25,000 ships that the sub AIS on them. I hope that will be as many or even more. We'll have a VDIS sub in the future. So, uh, in, in short, our uh, part in the collaboration uh, is that uh, we will provide the payload for the satellite up to today. The box itself will, will communicate with the boat and then down to ground, then the data goes home for something. Excellent. So, that, that gives me a perfect segue. <laughs> to Orcom. So Greg Flassati, welcome. You're the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Government AIS and Business Operations at Orcom, which is a leading provider of solutions that enable businesses to track and monitor assets. So what attracted you to this collaboration and what part does Orcom play? Well, well thank you very much for having me today. And uh, you know, first of all, I want to say that we're very pleased with the uh, uh, this groundbreaking space project that we're undertaking with both uh, Saab and AAC Clyde Space uh, that we think that you know it'll help revolutionize some of the maritime communications that provided additional coverage and increased bandwidth and, and, and enhanced versatility for some of the data sets that are available for in the maritime market. Um, you know, from an Orbcom standpoint, you know, Orbcom has had a long history uh, in the space-based maritime uh, data business, dating back to the early 2000s with our uh, being the creator of space-based uh, automatic identification system where we took ground-based systems and put them in, into space. We did that in cooperation with the U.S. Coast Guard, um, and we were the first provider of commercial AIS data services. So for well over a decade, we, do, we provided one of the most comprehensive uh, global data sets for AIS to both government and commercial customers uh, worldwide. Um, so, you know, what attracts us is the fact that we're always wait, looking at ways to uh, increase our data offerings and how to, you know, how we can continue to grow the business and offer our customers uh, better data, more data um, in this data-driven world. Um, and, uh, you know, we continue to innovate and continue to try to you know, grow the business. And, you know, as we previously announced this past year, we're building uh, two state-of-the-art satellites uh, with AAC Clyde Space, which are pretty close to completion. Uh, and uh, this is a good opportunity to leverage some of the work that was done there uh, and marry that along with, uh, you know, Saab's uh, industry-leading uh, VITAS transceiver, uh, which is, you know, definitely state-of-the-art. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're, they're applying it for a space-based application and putting that all together into this new satellite. So, you know, leveraging what uh, each uh, partner can bring uh, from that standpoint, from a technology standpoint, is certainly exciting to us. And for us as a um, you know, leader in the IoT space, um, you know, we're very skilled and very, uh, have a, a, a lot of background in, you know, data collection and distributing it and applying it to different applications for our global customer base. 
and our partner network that we have. Um, and we think this new satellite will allow us to test uh, the, that data and apply it to new applications um, and also provide additional AIS data. So it's, it, uh, it provides the, the best of uh, you know, several aspects uh, you know, to continue to uh, you know, build data sets available to the customers and build new applications uh, in this uh, you know, emerging uh, you know, maritime information uh, systems world. So you know, to kind of conclude, you know, we're, we're very excited about this opportunity that we can you know, work with both uh, AAC, Clyde Space and Saab to uh, you know, leverage this next generation technology uh, to enhance the communications uh, along with the uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, that will provide a higher level of safety and efficiency to both government and commercial customers worldwide. So uh, we look very, very forward to this, um, uh, this exciting venture. And as always, uh, you know, we think we, uh, uh, we're in with uh, some good partners. And so it's, um, uh, this is very exciting for us as we continue to evolve uh, in the maritime information and data um, collection arena. Fantastic, Greg, thank you so much. And then finally, moving back to Luis. So this, this new announcement today just underpins, you know, really solid momentum in the business. In Q1, you announced that revenues are up 60%. You've got a, an impressive order backlog. So with 30% of your business already coming from the US, what can you say about your expanding US strategy and what should investors look out for over the next six to 12 months? We have recently announced that we started trading on the LTC QX market. Uh, that was one of the steps that we saw as, uh, as important to actually um, give the opportunity to US investors to, uh, to, to join our our, our plans for the future and uh, to grow our, uh, to grow our um, market in the US. Um, we have been operating for many years and have been very successful in, uh, in supplying subsystems and hardware. And uh, we are working, of course, with Orcom on, the, on their current satellites. So we, we have already a strong business in the US, but it is the, the world's biggest space market. So we are, we are very interested in growing uh, that, uh, that that business that we already have there and and those are the plans uh, we are working on those right now we, we have been we've been working uh, for a while uh, on that and um, the OTC QX listing is just the first step on on that on that on that journey to uh, to actually be more present uh, in that market exciting times well Louis, Chris and Craig thank you so much for your time today and if you'd like to learn more about AAC Clyde Space or indeed small satellite technology, please visit the Edison website where you can freely access yeah. some research. Thank you.